In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm growing all of the jewel allocations, what nutrients I'm using, the media, the kind of light I'm using, how much I paid for them, and where I bought them. Hey everyone, Pablo from Allure and Inc. And I'm really excited to make this video because it means that I finally was able to get all of the allocations that I wanted to get. So I'm really, really excited about that. Let's set some ground rules on what I mean by jewel allocation because honestly, it is not clear in the internet. I did my Googling and it did not help because everybody just throws this name around however they want. They call everything, any allocation to jewel allocation that does not work for me so what we're going to use as a criteria for a jewel allocation is going to be sort of the size that it gets it needs to stay somewhat compact compared to you know massive giant um you know allocations this is my own personal definition of it you can choose however you want to define your jewel allocations but i just want to make sure we're on the same page on what I'm calling a jewel allocation. I'm not going to be covering specific details of where each plant is specifically from, what I land and sort of like specific conditions because I plan on making a video for each species. Hopefully, you know, once I get them to a nice little flowering size, I want to make a video of the entire journey. So for now, I'll just be more superficial. To grow allocations, you're going to need a nice, fast draining soil. You're going to need high humidity. You're going to need a lot of nutrients and that's it good luck i'm just kidding i honestly hate whenever plant tubers or people just tell me that i'm like that does not work for me i don't know what any of that means it does not feel objective enough if you want a little background about me i studied biology with a minor in chemistry so i really like specific stuff almost like a scientific method type that i can follow and that does not help so we're gonna set some ground rules on the kind of care that i'm going to be doing for this plant so you guys, we're on the same page also on that. All right, so the first thing is going to be the soil. So for this, I'm going to go with the semi-hydroponic method. And I know everyone and their mom has been doing the pond lately with the locations and they love it. But honestly, pond one is super expensive. Two, it's always out of stock. So I'm just gonna do with what I already have available. And I don't wanna have you guys purchase anything extra. I feel like this is something you would already have. So the first thing that I use for this is going to be perlite. I like using the chunky and coarse just because it gives me the whole range of perlite. Like I can pick how coarse or small I want it and break it. I don't know, it gives me a lot of variability. And then the other thing that I can use is going to be the Leca Hydroponic Pebbles. I bought this massive bag for like 16, what is it? Yeah, 16 pounds of Leca because I knew I was gonna be moving out of my house. So I wanted to, while I had a host, I wanted to be able to wash all the leka because that is the killer whenever you're in an apartment. Washing leka is a problem. So I made sure to wash a bunch of it before I moved here. So that is the material that I'm working with. So I know because pond already comes with its nutrients, which makes it great. Leka and perlite uh, do not have any nutrients. So that means that I need to take extra care of the water. So the next part that I'm talking about is going to be the nutrients. For the nutrients and the water that I'm using for all of these plants, you're going to need the pH up and pH down because I need to change the pH of my water. I live in South Florida, our water is really basic. So I need to bring that a little more acidic. The other thing that I'm going to be using is Clonex. Clonex uh, rooting growth solution. That one is basically used because I put the plants through a lot of stress and a lot of roots are lost. So I need a little bit of rooting hormone just to make sure that, you know, I don't know, I give them an extra little <laughs> so they survive. And then the last part is going to be the foliage focus from growth technology. Um, listen, I know it's, it's really expensive, right? Did I, I'm not sure if it's really, really good. So it's worth it, all the money that it costs, or if I just drank like the Australian Kool-Aid, I'm not sure. The point is I bought it and if you're going to buy it too, I have some tips for you. The number one is don't be dumb like me and buy the small size because you're going to pay a lot of money for 250 milliliters and then realize that, oh wait, for just double the price, you could have gotten a whole liter worth. So if you're going to be purchasing foliage focus, which at the moment, I don't know if I'm recommending or not, I'm just testing it out with this for the first time. Um, get the one liter that's what i'm gonna do when i run out of this i'm getting the one liter don't buy this small one and i personally do not enjoy make, mixing this solution all the time so what i did is get one of those five gallon blue containers and just get a way of getting water out 
and I just mix this once every you know month ish depends how many plants you have is how long it lasts but so far it's still pretty full and I've been here for like a month so I'm assuming it's going to be pretty good so that way I just take my pH down um, I like to be a little acidic I like to be on the yellow part of the scale in these kind of pH up and down I'm, I'm rooting or shooting for like a six ish maybe a little like a 5.5 something like that is what i want to do because i also believe that leka turns the water into a more basic solution i was playing around with the ph meter and basically i was just measuring the water before i put it into the leka and after i put it into a leka and it kind of got a lot more basic like it went back to being um like neutral after i put it in as acidic so i'm assuming that leka just has some kind of property that makes it a little more basic so I'm kind of like fight that back um, just to help the plants absorb all the nutrients as well as they can with a little acidic water. To measure light, we're going to be using a light meter and we're going to do everything in foot candles. And yes, I know that the correct way or the most optimal way of measuring the light for plants is PPFD, which stands for Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density. And yes, the name is complicated and measuring it is really expensive. The one measurements is like way more than what I paid for this one and turning foot candles or locks into PPFD involves doing math and that does not sound like fun. So we're not doing that. What we're doing is just going to be um, consistent. So I'm just going to measure on foot candles using this machine. It's going to basically be like you power it on, you change the decimal number two times and then you move it to foot candle um, and then that's it. You know, now, now we're just now we're measuring light. What I do with that is just measure how much light each of the leaves is getting where I position them. And I try to give all of the leaves more or less the same amount of light. Of course, I cannot control when the new leaves comes out or if they get closer or further away. That'll be my job to just like rotate the plant or just make sure they're not getting too much light. I did some research online on what is the most optimal sort of foot candle amount for alocasias. And I found some stuff all over the place, but what ended up being some sort of like an agreed range was 200 foot candles to 600 foot candles. So the space that I was going to use for my allocations was somewhat limited because I wanted to put it on metal stands and also on this stand. So what I needed to do was find some kind of light that was giving enough, but not too much. Because the ones that I had were burning the leaves because they were putting out too many foot candles. It was like over a thousand and the plan was like, please don't. I did some research and I found this, not sponsored, I don't know, I don't even know if it's good, I'm just using it for this. But it's called Barina, and this box was like 50 bucks and it had 8 of them. And the reason they're really good or useful for me is because they're not really strong. So it allows the plant to be close to the light and grow towards it and not burn it right away. So I don't know, so I figured it was worth a shot because it wasn't too much money on the line. I'll definitely let you guys know if I like them, if I don't, I'll make a review about that in the future, but right now I just don't have enough data. And finally, I use the push sensors um, to keep track of how much humidity there is and what is the temperature and it also like the dew point. I don't really use that, um, but this is what I use for that. I've been using it for years. I don't know if I recommend it. It's super, super expensive, like stupid expensive. What is $60? but it honestly has lasted and i got the one that you can change the battery and um it's water resistant or waterproof and it was outside when i had it in my house in florida and it was measuring everything fine and now it's indoors and it's also measuring everything fine and maybe i just answered to myself why it's so expensive because it's like good quality <laughs> um but anyway it's still alive and it's still measuring stuff well um so this is what i'm using i will show right now a little bit of a chart Basically, if you are in this ambient of the room, it's around 65 to 70 percent humidity. I am in South Florida, so the humidity is still everywhere. The AC is trying to fight back, but it literally cannot fight back the outside. So usually the average is going to be around 60 percent ish. I do have a humidifier, but I only put it near the plant that needs it when it's unfurling a new leaf. So I basically just move it around the plant place, just making sure that the one leaf that's coming out, like, you know, the one's getting stuck, the Cinderella shoe kind, I just put it right next to it to sort of like help out the best I can. All right, so that basically concludes all of the boring part, but we're just talking about how we're gonna raise this plant 
Now let's talk about the plans that I'm going to be racing, aka all of the Jewel level caches. But let's be honest, I don't know, there's new hybrids coming out, maybe I'm missing one. In this video, we'll be including a wish list and a no list. What that means is what plans I want to purchase and add into this journey, this sort of challenge of racing the dual allocations, and what plans I will not be purchasing and why. The first allocation that I got is going to be the Alocasia Maharani. This is a hybrid between Alocasia Mellow and Alocasia Reginula Black Velvet. Um, I've had this plan for a few years. I want to say I got it back in like 2020 or something like that. Um, obviously, this is not the original plan. Those plants um, just reproduce, it became a stump, and now I have a bunch of babies. Um, I just went to it when I was allowed to move, and I realized that the pod was just one stump and like four different plants. So I'm currently doing three. I plan on keeping the best looking rosette, sort of like which one gets like the better, mo most compact looking leaves. And then the other ones, I'm just gonna trade them. Something cool about South Florida is a lot of people here who grow rare ar aroe plants. Um, so you can trade with them fairly easily through Facebook just by giving them some like stuff that you're already growing. I absolutely love this plant. I'm posting some pictures right now of what it used to look like. Wait, I got it to flower. I tried to pollinate it. It did not sort of work. I think it's, it might be, um, I don't know. Is it sterile? I'm not sure. Some, some hybrids are sterile. I just wanted to sort of like experience what it was like. I do not recommend going onward for all of these plants. I will be removing the inflorescence, AKA the flowers because they smell like gasoline and it, just, it uses so much energy to produce them. And trust me when I tell you that all allocations put out like five flowers in a row. So just get them out of the way. It's going to put out another one, kill it, another one, kill it, another one, kill it. And eventually you're going to get a new leaf and now you're back on track. This plant has been just a joy to rate. This plant has just been a lot of fun to grow and I'm really excited to grow it again, probably to a bigger size. Um, I just think it's so cool, like the texture, the thickness of the leaves. And at least for me, it has been a really, really resilient plant that has not been really, really picky. So I'm excited to have the Great Dragon Alocasia Maharani. The second jewel Alocasia that I'm growing is going to be Alocasia Reginula Black Velvet. This is another plant that I've had for a few years. Um, again, I bought them sort of like at the same time and it's been such a fun plant to just grow. The texture, the way it looks is just incredible. It's super soft. The velvety name, you, you think you'd be let down, but you're not. It's really velvety. It's really fun. I really enjoyed this alocasia. It is not my favorite alocasia that I've grown. I'm going to show you which one it is but I really enjoy having this. Once it started creating inflorescence, I don't know why my alocasia black velvet well, just went to shit. I did not enjoy what it turned into. Um, I just started just putting out a lot of corns. I don't know. So this time I'm hoping that I do something different. Maybe if I just do like more nutrients or something like that, um, the alocasia black velvet, once it starts blooming, it will not just like die. Alocasia black velvet. The next one is basically like a one-two punch for the jewel alocasias. Both are Alocasia by Ginda, but they look so different and they, to me, they grow so differently that it's obviously considered two completely separate plants and two completely separate jewel allocations. So the first one is the Baginda Green Scale. Um, this plant is currently sitting in some soil. It's actually my last plant that is sitting on soil. I plan on moving it to Leka with some perlite, but it was developing these beautiful new leaves for like the longest time and it had just been transitioned indoors. Some of the other leaves were struggling, so I didn't want to like throw in even more. So now that it's fully out, I plan on moving into Leka really soon. This has been my favorite alocasia to grow. I mean, I don't know, they just get beautiful. The bigger the leaves, they get greener. It, it just looks like an alien plant. It's so much fun. Here are some pictures of basically the parent of this same alocasia Baginda green dragon. I mean, look at this picture. I mean, look at this picture. Look at this thirst trap. Look at this other picture. Come on, this is a beautiful plant that I love having and I cannot wait for it to get that big again. And of course, the next one is also going to be Alocasia baginda, but in this case, it's the silver dragon. This plant did not enjoy coming back indoors. It had been growing outdoors, you know, forever. Also another bit of a corm from that original great silver dragon that I had. But all of the leaves that it came with completely started to dry up in the front. 
which tells me that the humidity inside is not high enough for those leaves. They were like, we're out. But the latest leaf that it developed, like it just came out so beautiful. I mean, look at that. And it gained like so much size. It's a lot bigger than all of the other um, leaves. So I think it's doing well. I think it's enjoying being in Leka. That's also something that I think affected the others was transferring here. Um, it has a few roots that it has thrown out. This is a pot that has one of those capillary wicks. Um, I think it helps whenever the root system is not big enough because it's keeping the Leka sort of humid and moist. But now that it has some roots in the reservoir, I think it's going to do really well. So I look forward to growing this plant. It has not been my favorite. I don't know. I've had it also for a few years. And I think it's just because I love the green one so much that the silver has just never been able to compare. Here's some pictures of people who actually were able to grow a silver dragon to the point where I'm like, wow. So this is some of the potential that this plant has. And I hope now that I'm sort of really taking care of it and really tuning in and it's care that it starts to become something similar to that. So cost. Honestly, it's been a few years, so it was hard for me to find how much I paid for them. But I believe I paid $50 for the green and the silver, or maybe a little bit less than that. I believe I paid probably like $30 for the Maharani. And I don't remember how much I paid for my black alocasia, black velvet. I know I purchased it in person from some a grower here. I want to say maybe like $35. Um, but again, those plants have survived under my care for around three years. They've multiplied. And if I'm doing my plant math correctly, each plant ended up being basically free. Because I've gotten so many plants that or else I would have like killed and repurchased. And this plant's just reproducing and keep making babies. My plant math is like, it was basically like a dollar. That's how much I paid for them in my head. I paid a dollar. I don't know. But obviously, um, that is the price three years ago. The prices have completely changed. That is what's driving this video and I'm really excited about. Because before, it was a dream of mine to own many of these allocations because they were so expensive that I was like, I don't have $300 for a freaking allocation that I might kill. So I am so glad that all the prices came down to a point where I think it's really affordable, not only for me to try to grow them, but for me to experiment with them, for me to just kill them and repurchase them without feeling too guilty. So I'm really excited that all of the other allocations from now on, I'll show you exactly how much I pay for them. These were only the species that I basically own or have owned for the past few years that drove me to wanting to record this video and make this challenge. All right, so now I'm going to talk about all the plants that I purchased just recently in plugs and sort of like the process that I had with them. So what I'm doing with the plugs is harassing them. When you receive a plug plant, it's going to be with this dirt that is really, really compact. So if you're gonna put it in soil, usually you just crack it open and stick it in there. Some people like to really break them loose because they call it like the plug of death if it has this cloth around it. But since I was gonna put them in semi-hydro leka, um, it just didn't make sense for me to keep that because I need to wash that out. So when it arrived, my first, process is I need to remove the soil. So in plugs, it can be very, very difficult. So the more roots that it lost or whenever I finally managed to dissolve the, the plug, if it had a small root system, I added more perlite into the perlite leka uh, mix. And if it had a really nice big root system, then it was like 100% leka. So depending on how I felt that it, it was, is how much perlite to leka I put in them. But God knows that all of these plants were super stressed because I just, they got shipped, they got to me, and then I just cleaned them out. Some of them had um, spider mites, which is like not great, but I always make sure to quarantine my plants so I was safe. Um, and I just basically sat there under the hose, just working through the plug and then figuring out how much root I have and then putting into one of these. So the first plant that I'm going to be talking about is the Alocasia aslanii. Um, this is a beautiful plant known for like its pink veins. You can't really see it here, it's small. Pink veins um, and just green. It used to be really expensive, like two, three hundred dollars a couple of years back, but it no longer sort of is that expensive, thank God. Um, 
So this is Aslani Eye. We're gonna watch some pictures so you guys like, I talk about a little bit of what I love about them. Cool. Oh yeah, so like this is a good example of what I, what I mean by that. It gets this really cool pink veination on it. Um, like this is a good example, that one. Something that I have not seen has been mature specimens from people. I don't know if it's just because of, it's just a difficult plant to get there or maybe it just cannot have more than, I don't know, four leaves or something like that. But uh, look how pretty that is. So yeah, I definitely am um, Alocasia Aslanii. I'm so, so, so excited to have this plant with me now. I paid $13 for it, which is wild compared to how much it would cost two years ago when I looked at it, which was like 300 bucks. So I cannot wait to grow this plant. So far, it has not done a lot. It's literally the same three leaves that it came with and it doesn't look like it has any new leaves anymore. But I can see all of the roots underneath growing and you can see here's a good example of like a root that is, it looks like a little warm. Uh, you see there. So I think it's right now just focused on figuring out where the hell it is and just growing some root systems and then hopefully it starts to get some banger leaves soon. The sixth jewel alocasia that I will be growing is alocasia cuprea. So you can see right here, it gets its name from this like beautiful shine. This one is called Red Secret. I honestly think that it's just one. It's just like Alocasia Cupria. Some of them call it Red Secret, some don't. I think it depends on the lighting. But so far, this one is looking really, really red, really nice. This is the only Alocasia that is going to be in a soilless sort of like aroid mix. And the reason is it was the first one that I purchased before I decided it was from a different seller than all the others. And I decided to buy it. And when it arrived, it, was in this, it had a beautiful root system and this beautiful um, aroid mix. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna keep it like this. I don't wanna like mess it up. So I just kept it, but I think whenever I repot it into something bigger, I think it's definitely getting moved to just like that. And then so far it has just worked a lot on growing its root systems. You guys can see um, that's what it has done. Another one that has that um, wick. I really like those wicks because it helps the roots sort of come down. And you can see, um, yeah, it grew a beautiful root system. It's really, really happy and it did not miss a beat. It just kept pumping out leaves and I see like a new one is coming out currently. You can see at the bottom of it, purple. Um, don't focus on me. Um, absolutely love this one. So let's look at some pictures so we know why we're doing this with a mature specimen. Oh my God, look at this variegated one. In this video, I'm not really talking about variegated plants or variegated alocasias because they're absurdly expensive. All of these plants that I'm talking about come in a variegated form, but they're really beautiful, they're really expensive, and they're unstable. So right now I'm just gonna grow them like the normal form and then maybe buy a variegated one in the future, um, figure something out. Right now I just don't feel comfortable spending thousand dollars on a freaking alocasia variegated plant that might die or stop being variegated and not a vibe. So let's go through some of these pictures here. Ah, oh, look how pretty this one looks. Sydney plant guy, you know, he's known for how big some of the um, alocasia is. His is so beautiful. I hope mine gets something anywhere near that. I would be really, really happy. Oh, look at this pink. I think this would be a really pretty variegation because you definitely get a lot of pink. Um, you can see in this picture, so pretty. Yeah, I'm really excited to be growing this plant. And for this plant, I paid a whooping $9. Yep, that's right, I paid $9 for this. I was really excited when I found it. And it turns out that other places also have it fairly cheap. What I'm assuming happened, all right, so like story time. What I think is happening and why all these plants became so cheap out of the blue is I think the variegated ones are getting like super hype. So people are somehow multiplying the corms or just buying like bulk stuff and then just grow a bunch and they just wait for the ones that are variegated to like pluck them out and sell them for absurd amount of money. And they just end up with a bunch of just the normal type that is like, what do we do with this? So they're reselling them like super cheap. Maybe, I don't know, that is my hypothesis because all of these places are selling the variegated ones and I know those are unstable and they just are small. So I don't know, I'm just sort of thinking of what they do. 
Number seven of the jewel alocasias that I'm going to be growing is going to be Alocasia nebula imperialis. You can see here, definitely on the struggle bus. Um, this plant was basically pushing out these new leaves when it was shipped. So these leaves just had a really tough time. And then to top it all off, it came into my possession. And then it, I was like, listen, sis, you're about to get just waterboarded. And I did. So this one did not have a really good root system once I was done removing the, um, the plug. So I don't know. I'm hoping that it does okay. But I will not be too concerned if it dies because I paid $12 for this. So if it dies, which I hope it doesn't because I hate when plants die. I'll just buy a new one and try again, that, which is the great thing about this one. So let's look, at, let's look at some pictures because Nebula Imperialis is honestly a beautiful plant that I, uh, I kind of wait for it to get like this. So look at this. I wanted to have those heart. It's like a, almost like a silver dragon, um, but with beautiful heart shapes. Oh, look at that size. This is beautiful. Mm, this one looks a little bit different. So, you know, sometimes um, Instagram just shows you everything with the same tag. This one is really pretty. I like that one a lot. This one too. Yeah, so I think it's gonna be really interesting to grow. I've heard that this is a really difficult plant out of all the alocasias to specifically grow um, indoors. So I'm gonna give it a shot and we'll see what happens. The eighth jewel alocasia that I'm going to be growing is Alocasia bisma platinum. Look how pretty this plant is. Just put out a new leaf, super nice. Um, it also did the same thing as the other ones, which I'm thinking is what alocasias just do. It dedicated maybe like a few weeks to just putting out new roots. You can see that the bottom of the pot now has like a bunch of roots all over. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to grow this plant. Um, this, let's look at some pictures. Bisma just gets long. Look how picture how pretty this one is. Look, they look like silvery, which it is really silvery, and it has this long, elongated, and it's more long, almost like a dragon's breath, rather than a heart shape like the one before. So I'm really excited just to grow it and see what the difference are between them, how difficult it is. So far, it has been really, really resilient. I think it maybe lost one leaf than from when it came and it just pushed out a new leaf it created a beautiful root system so so far it's been pretty easy so i'm really excited to get this plant going and for it to look like anywhere near this because this is beautiful the ninth jewel alocasia that i'm going to be growing is going to be alocasia infernalis capit black panther why does it have so many like subtypes honestly this is the plant that i think is gonna die no, this plant has been on the struggle bus since it got here. It just did not have a lot of roots um, just out of the plug. Like I pulled it, I looked at it and it had like a few. So I was hoping that it was, was going to be easy to remove, but they turned out to be really brittle and just really fragile and it did not come out with a lot. So right now it's super struggling. It had two more leaves. They died, like completely melted. This is the last one standing. So, you know, we're giving it a prayer and hoping that it survives, but if it doesn't, I'll just buy a new one because I paid, nine, wait, $19. Hold up, I almost paid $20 for this one. This is the most expensive one, I think, of, of the bunch. Damn, no wonder it's like also the most fragile. Um, I've also read that this plant is fairly difficult compared to others. So this could be an example of that. It has obviously not grown um, any sort of root anywhere that I can see. Um, it just, just has that wick that I'm talking about. Um, it has a lot of perlite because again, it did not have a lot of roots. So the less roots that it has, the more perlite that I put in my mix because sometimes you just grow them in pure perlite, like a hundred percent. So that is sort of like the thought process. Like, oh, if you root a locations in a hundred percent perlite, maybe that'll be the balance out. So let's look at some pictures because this is another beautiful, beautiful plant that I'm really excited to own and to grow and I hope it survives because look at this. Wow, it's compact. It has this really beautiful rosette. It's really, really dark um, color. Oh, I like that. So pretty. It has this shine. I'm sure the shine for this picture, but look how black that is. Wow. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one, um, Infernalis. Black Panther. I really hope that it survives because, oh, look how pretty it can be. This 
The variegated one, wow. I'm sure th that one is super expensive. Oh, that one is kind of pink. I wonder why this one is more pink and this one is more dark. I wonder if there's like different co colors. If not, um, Kapuas. Anyway, Alocasia Infernalis is beautiful and I hope mine survives. Not a lot of faith in this. But again, it was just because I chose to move them into semi-hydro right away, like within the next day that I got them. I didn't want to deal with soil and just over soil. The 10th jewel alocasia that I'm going to be growing is alocasia blue dragon. And that's it. I have no idea what this plant is. It was just available in the same seller that I bought everything else from. So I was like, sure, why not? It sounds interesting. You know, you sold me with the marketing of calling it a dragon, like, you know, silver dragon, green scale. Like, of course I want to get the blue dragon. I need the set. But I asked them what it was, if they knew if it was like a kind of like a species that was uh, undescribed or something like that, or a hybrid. And they believe that it's some kind of hybrid of the Maharani, but they're not sure what the other half is. So I think we're gonna find out together. Hopefully it survives. Um, I, listen, in my dreams, and there's not a lot, like if you Google it, like there's zero information, you basically just find the same seller that I bought this from. So I'm assuming that not a lot of people either have it or they're calling something different or, if, you know, they're, I don't know. But I'm really excited to grow this because it's sort of like a mystery plant. Like what'll be the 10 jewel? It'll be beautiful and shiny and like, Oh my god, if it turns into like a blue Maharani, that would be beautiful. Oh, like a, like a Cuprea, like a blue, shiny, uh, that would be beautiful. But I really have no idea. I'm just going off my imagination. Um, of course, subscribe if you want to like keep up with what happens with that plant. Again, I plan on making a video for each species once I get them to a big size and then just tell you if, and if I found to be easy or just a pain in the ass. Hey, so this is Pablo from the future from where you were watching that other part of the video. So the day after I filmed that, I went to First Market, which is a chain here in South Florida. And I basically was just walking around. Of course, I went to the plant section and I found the saddest looking alocasias ever. I made a short about it. You can go watch it. But basically, I just had had to rescue these alocasias. One, I didn't quite have these two like in a plug and two they were 50 percent off so while i know that these allocations are not technically plugs i honestly feel like because they were a looking so bad and b have like one leaf ish i feel like they count towards the same video i felt like i just wanted to add them so this will feel more complete all right without any more explanation let me tell you about the two bonus jewel allocations that I found at Fresh Market. The first alocasia is alocasia mellow, which is one of the parents for Maharani. This one had a really nice, beautiful leaf. You can see how cool the texture is. I know it's like literally skin. It is pretty leathery, which is a lot of fun. Um, This particular plant was listed as Mellow Light, which I'm not sure if it's like an actual thing or more like a marketing thing. So I'm just going to call it a Mellow, and that's what I'm going to consider it. I'm actually pretty excited to grow this one right next to the Maharani because it's going to let me sort of experience how different they are and be able to tell you if it's worth or not having both. So I can already see the main difference between these two leaves sort of like in how circular they are and it's sort of like the influence from the black velvet. So I'm really excited to just be able to experience it. This plant was 50% off and I paid $9.99 for it. So like $10, that counts. So the best part about this plant, is it the best part? I don't know if it's the best part. But the double bonus about having this plant is while I was changing it into semi hydro leca, you can see some of the root system, which was pretty good. I hope that it adapts without too much of an issue. But I was able to find like eight corms. So I made another short showing you how I put them into some perlite. And we're also going to keep up with that. Right now it's day one. So we'll see what happens at day 10, 30, and so on. Subscribe to just make sure you keep up with them but I basically got nine plants with it so plant math is 
this plant was like two dollars so that's like a super deal <laughs> The other allocation that I was able to find there is this one. This is Allocation Nebula Silver. This plant actually had another leaf, but it was looking kind of rough, so I cut it. This is the second version of Nebula that we have. So this is Nebula Silver. And as before, this is Nebula Imperialis. So of course, right now, we cannot tell the main difference between them because they're too small. So I'm hoping to grow both right next to each other and then be able to tell you one, is it really a different plant-ish? You know, is it really worth having a different tag for the cultivar or are they basically the same thing? So I don't know. The internet was not really clear on the pictures. I'm going to show you one here and the other here and they kind of look the same. So I'm not really sure if it's going to be like that, if it's really different but i will let you know i also paid ten dollars for this because it was 50 percent off which is always amazing unfortunately this one unlike the other one did not have any corns so no corns for us so we only have one plant that i hope i don't kill but if i do again it was ten dollars so it will not be the end of the world let me know below if you have either one of these nebulas i've read that they are pretty difficult they're pretty finicky so I'm going to see how difficult they are and if there's a really clear difference between these two. But let me know how you find this plan to be down below. All right, so this basically concludes all of the plans that I wanted to include as the jewel allocations by the definition that we talked about at the beginning of the video, right? Because I wanted these plans to stay compact-ish and to have the same sort of like theme. But according to the internet, and also because I wanted to just grow them and compare them, there's a bunch of other plants that are categorized by the internet into allocational jewels, um, jewel allocations. The thing is, I don't agree with that because I think they get too big. They are too big of plants and that makes it into a difficult sort of for me to put them in the same category. This get massive, but I just wanted to include them because I want to erase them and I just wanted this to be like a really what like and i wanted this video to be about all of the different allocations that i'm wanting to grow and all of them are technically dual allocations all right so let's get started with the extra five allocations that i have that are potentially dual allocations but maybe not you decide tell me in the comments if you think they're dual allocations so the first one is going to be two well actually the first two are the same plant species is just two different cultivars I think it's like a cultivar or like maybe they're separated by where they are located and they just grew really different. So the first one is going to be hetero, Heterophylla Corazon. Um, this is great plant so far. Look how beautiful. Um, it came with these three leaves so far. It was really big. It was the biggest plug that I got. It had many, many, many roots. So I chose to put it into a net a net with the like on there's no um i want to say there's no perlite in here and you can see like the roots are already there and they're already coming out so that it, i love growing this plant in the reservoir because then the roots just take over everything underneath like you can see in this maharani that i just had here like it also has the roots under and i think there's one maharani that is like insane the amount of roots that it decided to just sort of like throw hold up let me find it oh yeah this one i forgot to brought that up so basically when you have the, the semi-hydro i put the water underneath and i try to keep the amount of water under the leka so it just so sort of like evaporates and then keeps it like moist but look at the absurd amount of roots that this allocation maharani was like yeah let me just throw that in the reservoir like why why we gotta be extra? Why we gotta throw do all of that when you have two leaves? Two leaves! And like this is a new one, this is the crappy one. Ooh. Let's look at the roots. So this is Alocasia heterophylla corazon, and as you see, it's basically a little bit more green. It kind of looks like it, and it's a little more round. The other one is a little slimmer. So I guess is why it's corazon is because it's a heart more heart-shaped. Um yeah, look at how cool those are. It does look like a very, even though it's the same plant, 
species. It looks like a very different cultivar type. It's really cool. So I'm really excited to grow both, realize what the difference is, just be able to tell you, make a video comparing, you know, Heterophyllite like Corazon to Dragon's Breath to Platinum, the Bismarck, because it kind of looks similar, right? Like they're giving you the same energy. So I just want to compare them and be like, which one's better? All right, so Alocasia Heterophyllite like Dragon's Breath is this really long, elongated, slim, silvery, like it's beautiful. Also it has the name Dragon and I just like that. But again, it gets really, really big compared to what other ones have. Like look at this one, so pretty. Um, look at that. But I believe this ones, I've seen some pictures, I don't see any here, but I've seen them get just absolutely massive. Like this is pretty big. So I'm not sure if it falls under this category, but Dragon's Breath is beautiful and I kinda wait to see like it's long leaves. The 13th Jewel Alocasia that I wanna grow is the Alocasia Chienlii Antoro Black Velvet. So this is, it's probably gonna be hard to show on camera, but this is really like velvety. It has like little hairs, almost like the Jacqueline. It's super, super soft. It has it both on in the upside and the underside of the leaf. Um, unfortunately, when I was cleaning it, I snapped off the newest growth because it was just coming out. So right now it's been struggling because it doesn't have anywhere to go. Um, so it's, I see the new leaf coming in right in the middle at the bottom, but it has not lost any leaves. This, however, is the second time I purchased this plant from this seller. The first plant, the first time around, only had very limited amount of roots. It looked a lot actually like the Infernalis that is like on the struggle bus. And it literally melted like in two days. I got it, I got it out of the plug, I put it into um, semi-hydro. Next day it was like all dead. And then I put it in like a humidity dome, everything. And then it was like dead. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna purchase it again. And then this time around, I'm gonna take better care of it. And the one that I received this time had a beautiful root system. It was large. So I think it's gonna do really well. I just saw this plant being sold. Um, not me myself, I saw a post about it. Like it's going to start being carried by like some of those big box stores. And I'm really excited just to grow it and for you guys to like see it because it's, it's such a unique plant. Um, it's also really dark, almost like that Infernalis, but it has this hairy, oh, this is a good picture showing the hairs. Yeah, like it's really hard to portray through video um, or in picture, but here you see through like the light, the little hairs that it has. It's a beautiful plant. Um, I'm really excited to be growing it. You know, that's an interesting way of the leaves. It gets a little velvet, like wavy. That's, that's interesting. I like how wavy they're getting um, with that. So I can kind of see it. So I have high hopes to what this is going to turn out. And I just hope that more people start purchasing it because I haven't seen... I've seen people selling it. I have not seen other growers or plant tours like being like, I own it. So I just wanna see like, is it really hard to keep indoors? Like, we'll find out. Um, both times for this plant, both times for this plant, I paid $16, which is not too bad. That's why I felt like I could just repurchase it. The 14th jewel alocasia that I'm going to be growing is going to be the alocasia princeps, AKA purple cloak. This is another one, again, it just, my fault oops it has a little perlite because i low-key snapped a bunch of its roots when i was like transferring out of the uh plug um if this one dies i'm taking the full l on myself because it actually had a decent amount of roots it just got tangled and i pulled and it just snapped and i was like Ugh. so it doesn't have the best root system right now and it had this one leaf coming out that's been just half coming out for like a month so I'm just glad that it finally made it out. Um, so far, it looks promising. Let's look at some pictures. This is clearly, even though it's in this category of could be a jewel alocasia, I think it gets too big to be considered a jewel alocasia. I think it's more with like the odora of those giant um, taro plants, because those are massive. But look how pretty this is going to get. Oh, it has this also this sort of like um, heart, but a lot more pointed. Um, beautiful stem. I don't, my, my stem is not quite like that. So I wonder if it, it'll get fully purple as it gets older or right now it's just like spotted. Like it just has a lot of purple coloration going up it. That one is really pretty. Oh, I like that one. There's one with some guy that is holding a massive one. What is this? No, where was I? Look at that. Yeah. 
See, it's huge, almost like the Stingray, which I also have. Um, that looks really cool. I mean, this video, like, it's odd actually like upselling it. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty lukewarm on it. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna feel about it. Um, I just purchased it because I know it looks cool. I just don't know if the growth, ex growing experience is gonna be fun with how leggy and small and top heavy it is. So I don't know, we'll find out. The 15th and last jewel alocasia for this is going to be alocasia quilted dreams. Let me hide from the camera, yes. Look how pretty this is. Um, all the pictures basically make it look like the big, long, petiole cousin of the uh, the Baginda uh, green scale. So I am interested in um, sort of growing and knowing the difference. The technical, the species name is Sinuata, uh, Alocasia Sinuata um, Quilted Dreams. And here I'm gonna show some pictures of what it's supposed to look like. See, it's really similar to the um, the green scale, but it seems to get a lot bigger. At least that is what I have sort of like gathered from it. Which one is this one? Nope, that one's quite a phone. Hmm, not a lot of footage. So we'll see, we'll see how um, this turns out. I'm hoping that is a different experience because again, I've had the other one for like four years, three years. Um, so yeah, we'll see. So we made it to the part of the video where I talk about my, basically my wish list. Like while true, I think I got most of the Alocasia's jewels. I think there's one that I was not able to find with this seller and I was just not able to find for cheap. I'm just gonna be honest. Like it was just more expensive than the rest. I was like, I have a $15 price range for you and I could not find it. So I was like, all right, whatever. We'll get it eventually. Maybe I'll trade some of this ones for that. Uh, maybe for like a corm or something. The first plant in my wish list of jewel alocasias is alocasia scalprum. Again, this was not that cheap. Um, it looks like a heterophylla, just green. It doesn't have the shininess of the silver blue, but it's still giving you like that slick metallic. It's just looking a lot more green, almost black in this one. Um, yeah, this is a beautiful plant, alocasia scalprum. Yeah, so I'm excited to find this. If you guys want to trade or something, um, let me know because I want this plant just to add it to the rest of the collection and see how different things are. The next alocasia in my wish list is alocasia Friedeck. So I know it gets so big that I was not convinced that it could be a jewel alocasia, and I honestly still don't. Like, sue me. I, I think it just gets too big. Look how big this is. Um, I've seen it get massive. And also I've heard that it's a um, spider mite magnet, which I mean, let's be honest. I, I know that Antoro, black Antoro velvet, it's gonna be a spider mite magnet. But in this case, I um, I don't love that shape. I'm gonna rant a little bit about the allocations that I don't care for in at, at the end of the video. And it hits the same note. So if I get this plant, I think I'm going to go the extra mile. Oh my God, look from Planty Minash, how beautiful this plant is. Girl. Oof, yeah, no. Beautiful. So I think if I'm going to get a variegated one, I'm going to buy this one because it is around $75-ish. That's what I've seen the small tissue culture ones go. Um, but again, I'm a, I'm a little hesitant, it's not urgent. I'll maybe wait for the price to come down a little bit more in those tissue culture Fridex, um, but it's beautiful. I definitely want this plant. I don't think it's a jewel alocasia and it's not, I'm in no rush to get it, but um, definitely alocasia, Friday, variegata, oh, beautiful. Next plant in my wish list is alocasia reversa. Um, honestly, I'm not even sure how different of an experience to grow this plant is compared to other metallic like the silver um, dragon scale or something like that. I mean, look, it looks kind of similar, but I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to just get it as a completionist kind of way. Like it's not doing it for me, so I don't want it because I think it's super, super unique and pretty compared to the others. At least none of the pictures um, reversa. This in what's is pretty. Uh, reversa, reversa. It's okay. So I want it as a wish list, more for like a checklist, but it's not really that up there. 
So I'm sure by now you're probably screaming at me. Hey Pablo, how can you title this growing all jewel allocations when you're missing my favorite allocation? All right, all right, all right, fine. So let me tell you a little bit about which plants or which jewel allocations I do not own or want to own and why. Some of them are simply not jewel allocations. So unless you can sort of prove to me why or if a dwarf version of that, they are just not dual allocations. An example of that is allocation stingray. I've owned this plant for years. I actually had it outside. It got massive and then became this magnet for spider mites. And I literally just sacrificed it to the gods. I put it in the corner of my where all my plants were and it was just covered in spider mites. I would treat it. I would do my best and it would always be covered in spider mites. And I just said, whatever, I don't care. It put out a bunch of pups. It was whatever it was ten dollars i was not over it but the point is it got a huge and i would not consider that to be a dual allocation so stingray or dora uh, the mickey mouse that's a Sant santosoma right um any of those kind of allocations are just not dual so they are will not be part of this series of growing all dual allocations the other type is sort of the variation of an oldie but goodie to me this always seems like a marketing ploy it's sort of giving you the latest like trend which is just the new stripe or the new color of the old plant by that i mean something like allocation ninja which is a version of like velvet this is like velvet that just has more stripes it's just slightly different but not really a new plant to me i don't know if that's gonna give me an enough experience to be like different from having a velvet alocasia to warrant me purchasing it or growing it so anything that is basically the exact same plant like with the pink dragon morocco ivory coast anything like that i am not interested in growing like the same plant twice just because of a check mark like i want to get something different out of it and the last type of alocasia that you're not going to see being part of this series is anything to do with Alocasia poly or Amazonica or Bambino or Longigloba or Purply or anything like that. The main reason is twofold. One, I've had this plant for years, so I feel like I got enough. Like I looked at it the first time, I loved it, I purchased it. I found it to not be the easiest of Alocasias to grow. It's pretty finicky while it's figuring out where it likes to be once it finds a spot it just sort of like grows 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 and just puts out a bunch of different forms all the time and you're like great but figuring out where that spot is is going to make this allocation just melt and it can be really difficult so i grew it for a few years and it multiplied and then i had like 10 of them and it was just not doing it for me and i thought you know what's gonna really make the difference i'm gonna buy it in purple and I decided to get the alocasia purply. And true, while you might think that seeing this plant in purple would really make a difference, and it kind of did, the purple is really, really like quick. You only have the purple when the leaf is unfurling. You do not have it the rest of the time. I have a few pictures of my actual purply. Well, like one over here, one over here. And it was beautiful. And I love looking at that purple vein. And I wish it would have gotten like super, super bright, like some of the pictures in the internet. But it just never did. And then within like a day or two, it would just fade back to looking exactly like this. I don't know. That is just not my fantasy. That is just not what I want out of a plant. And whether this plant is the same, but longer or thicker or rounder or more pronounced, uh, you know, more pronounced lows or whatever it is. I just kind of don't care for that. So if that is the kind of plant that you love, that's awesome. I love that for you, but I already lived it. I already experienced it. And I just don't kind of want to waste my time with any of the Amazonica anything, except let me put a caveat on that. I would like to have maybe like a variegated version of one of them. I know the Bam Bam is common of um, right now it's around like $75. Maybe if it goes to like 30, I would purchase one of them. Um, I don't really love variegated allocations in the sense of, I love looking at them. They're gorgeous. And I love your pictures. 
but I don't trust myself with them because they're really expensive and they're not stable. And if they just die, they die. So I'd rather just grow all of the normal version, non-variegated version. And then once I realize which of all of them I love the most, I am just gonna buy that in a variegated version. There's, there's some Nebula out there, there's some Copria out there. There's some awesome variegated plants, um, but just not this one. Now for the next part, I'm just going to talk about where I got these plants from. The first few, I honestly do not remember. I'll try to post like a screenshot if I find the email or confirmation of how I got those first four. So like the Maharani, the Silver, the Green Dragon, and the, um, and the Black, Alkesha okay, Black Velvet. So those are like really common, so you can find them. But all of the other ones I got from um, this store, this is not sponsored, even though they do have my address. So if you wanna send me something, hey, you're welcome to. But um, this, I basically purchased all of them from a company called Salad's Beard Farm. I believe they're also based here in South Florida, so the shipping is fairly quick, and I think the plants don't go through some, too much stress. Again, um, I found out about them through Plant Story. If you don't know what Plant Story is, it's like an application for your phone where they do a lot of live auctions of plants, so like live stores. It's kind of like social media for plant people. Sign up under my link. They're having a competition every month, basically. And I'm hoping that Plant Story can just sponsor my plant addiction. So if you don't have this, sign up to that today. This is not sponsored by them, but you should to let them know that I sent you because who knows, maybe when you're watching this, I already have like a discount code. Maybe they hooked me up with like 10% for Allure. I don't know. So you can just message them and maybe they do, maybe they don't. Maybe if enough of you bug them, they'll create one for us. Who knows, just be nice. And again, this is not sponsored. Um, I don't know if they'll still have availability for you when you're watching this, but as of right now, it's November of 2023. They have all of these amazing allocations in their store for super cheap. 